it's time for dad jokes with ash not again what do gingers look forward to later in life gray hair no no who let him in here anyway how do you put the moves on a redhead girl gingerly you just want to be quiet or i'm gonna smack you now i mean it what do you call the offspring when two gingers have children gingerbread get it ginger gingerbread Look at the confidence. Ash here, coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you all here with me. Chillin', talking some Raid today. Sending some positive vibes, some love your way, especially if you need it out there. Today we're going to talk about, oh, one of my favorite little dwarves inside the entire game. And actually, before we talk about our good old Gala Long Braids, our favorite ginger in the game. Sorry about that intro, by the way. But first, I gave a lot of love to today's video sponsor. It is Omni Heroes. Guys, you know Omni Heroes. Kind of a casual RPG, the perfect game to play alongside raid shadow legends where every female character has huge ginormous brains and brawn and the ability to cast magic spells that's right they're back for season four join the mysterious eastern adventure in season four omni heroes download now using my link in the pinned comment in the show notes below that's right in all sincerity guys omni hero is actually a really really solid game i think you guys will enjoy it in fact it's received strong recommendations from the google play store and the app store as as well. So for those of you who don't know, Omni Hero is all about basically rescuing these Valkyrie characters and then using them to summon these legendaries, form these teams around them. A lot of strategic density and synergy that stem from the Valkyrie system. As a matter of fact, my personal favorite is Dora Bella. Ooh, the ethereal Valkyrie and a mage. I love a good mage. By the way, quick interlude guys, you download now using my link to the QR code on the screen. You'll get 999 pulls to secure a minimum of 5 legendary heroes what better and more compelling way to start a new game than guaranteeing five legendary heroes in 999 summons and that was actually 999 times three so season four i know the info you're all waiting for you can see in the background right now this is actually an exciting season stemming from well where else season three right <laughs> go figure uh this has new relics it has a new storyline it has a new roguelike dungeon as well the new storyline really stems from kind of the wukong dynasty you guys might be familiar with the name kind of this uh this this chinese fantasy kind of ancient lore vibe to it which i really enjoy so guys what the heck are you waiting for download now the season four just went live so perfect timing there's a new event called glorious return coming up as well which i am excited about and first and foremost use my link so you can claim your 999 times three summons get your hands on some new legendary heroes to start out your adventure in omni heroes thank you omni heroes for sponsoring today's video i have to tell you guys you should do this man you should do this Just to me she even can beat out Faceless as the hardest hitting uh, single target nuker out of any epic in the game. And she can really stand toe to toe with legendaries because she can get the double turn and kill two mobs basically in one turn. Faceless, by the way, Nobody really talks about Faceless, but he has this ability, Ice Bolt, that ignores shield block damage in 100% defense. This ability smacks, but Gala has, again, the back-to-back -back single target potential. She also has multi-hitters, just a lot more viable. So everybody do this. Ooh, the Lava Born so of the Drakes. Get over here! How you like that? Oh, Plarium. Oh, you're tempting me. Still's like, yo, I heard you had a thing for redheads. How about some lava born ashy poo? I am better than that. All right, all right, all right. Getting a little carried away here, guys. So everybody go to your altar of souls, go to your wish list, and put Gala Long Braids on there. Put Gala Long Braids, a Boro and Magnar too, while you're at it, guys. Who do you have on your wish list? Let me know. And why don't they add a mythical uh, section for wish lists, right? You know, I mean, people are starting to get their hands on Carnage and or Makage. Add a mythical uh, tier li or wish list area. Anyway, I digress. Why do we love Molly, or not Molly Tankard, Gala Long Braids, wrong dwarf ash, wrong redhead dwarf ash. I just wanted to say that I'm getting sick and tired of everyone making fun of redhead people. Why do we love Gala Long Braids, the Long Braids and all so much? Well, she's amazing. Now, I, I mentioned this before they added Epic Empowerment, but... 
after or before mythicals and stone skin and polymorph was a thing right before that there was an era there was a time before these things in pvp right uh gala long braids really reign supreme in terms of the epic champion maybe her and madam Ceres that were used most in the end game even most recently gala was like the only epic that you saw in the top 100 she wasn't super popular but there were a number of top players who actually preferred and did use her so she's super squishy but why is she so good well on her a1 ability attacks two times each hit ignores 30 percent of the target's defense plays a shield in this champion for two turns based on 20 percent of the damage inflicted so we get a double ignore defense hit on the a1 sign me up on the a2 ability fearless aggression this is definitely your hardest hitting single target ability uh both her a2 and her a3 have a hell hades stamp of approval on the hellhades.com in terms of the godlike overall damage grading attacks one enemy will ignore 50 percent of the target's defense when when attacking under a shield so if we can get helm smasher and savage we can get a hundred percent ignore defense heals this champion by 50 percent of the damage and and place a shield on this champion equal to any surplus heal for three turns but it all starts with the a3 ability sheer swagger attacks one enemy three times each hit will ignore 25 percent of the target's defense grants an extra turn if this champion has full hp after using this skill so we can come in there with the triple ignore defense on the sheer swagger here are the multipliers by the way we have a 1.6 attack with the ignore defense on a triple hitter on the a3 a 4.7 attack with a 50 percent ignore defense on the a2 this can hit super hard which you guys will see and a 1.7 on the two-time hitter on the a1 with the 30 percent ignore defense let me show you how i have her built in today's video this is my favorite build for the arena on gala long braids and we'll talk about kind of how to uh how to set up a champion like this right so this is gala we have her in the four piece stone skin and the four piece savage set right alternate ways to build her especially if you're not lucky enough to get the, the the stone skin on the accessories you can absolutely just build her with stone skin in cruel you can build her i think the best way to get maximum damage would be in a six piece merciless set plus a two-piece cruel set you'd have to have merciless again on the accessories but cruel plus merciless can get that really sought after 40 percent ignore defense right so that's really really strong that'd be another way that you guys could build her but i like the stone skin especially in the arena and with stone skin you're basically ensuring that she's going to have that full hp going into her first turn thus granting the extra turn i i even like her with a blood shield uh accessory on so throw a blood shield that way you're ensuring she has the shield because we really want to we need to ignore 50 percent of the target's defense of course the other way to go about that would just be making sure that we have a bolster set on the team with her or a shield champion like a Chris or somebody who gives her that shield out the gate right so blood shield shield set bolster set set excuse me or you know a champion like a Chris or somebody who gives that shield to her who goes ahead of her right we have heaven cast as as a blessing here i actually like heaven cast guys at three star awakened uh one percent extra damage on the target for every buff that she's under so we can pair her with like a necrit the great or like a, a lot of buffs and get actually a decent amount of damage again one percent for each buff on her we can get that up to one and a half percent at five stars or two percent at six stars of course i think the other popular ways to go with her are going to be let's talk about alternates here obviously no access to the legendary uh blessing so i think phantom touch getting a little bit of bonus damage based on her attack would be a great option for you guys and of course there's always cruelty if you're lucky enough to have her six star fully awakened uh, i would of course consider a crushing rend there to ignore defense on every hit of the target but i really do like heaven cast i think it's a really fun one guys for masteries well this is what we have in today's video we have uh going down the defensive tree there's no reason 
to get any accuracy on this champion. She's fairly easy to build. I went offense. I picked up Ruthless Ambush. I picked up Opportunist. I came down, most importantly, with Helm Smasher on Gala. Long Braids, the counterattack as well, and the Retribution. Again, a pretty hard-hitting A1. So that's the build. Really quickly, I'll show you. We have attack on the uh, the banner, excuse me. We have crit damage on the amulet, and we have attack on the ring. We have uh, speed on the boots. Not bad. Attack percentage as an ascension as well. We have attack percentage on the chest, and we have crit damage with some crit rate on the gauntlets. So just looking for attack. Crit rate, crit damage, right? So we could actually, on this build, I'm very happy with her attack. Look at how much we're gaining from the four-star empowerment, guys. Four-star empowerment, if I can only get that blessing up now, right? Uh, but she's one of the first epics that I got uh, fully uh, awake and power, excuse me, right? Uh, I don't know about you guys. I mentioned this uh, before as well. Didn't hear from a lot of you guys, so maybe it's just me. But I'm really kicking myself for not keeping more dupes of my favorite epics over the years, right? Because, man, I, I have Gala, which is awesome. I have, I think, four or so other epics. But I should have a lot more, considering the hundreds and hundreds of epics that we pulled over the years. Anybody in the same boat as me there? Uh, in terms of area rankings, guys... She's an arena champion. She's a good single target damage dealer. So I've seen actually people uh, use her in Hydra Clan boss. It, just make sure you're bringing Hex on the team. She can deal some really, really nice damage. Single target there. Faction War, she's great against the red boss. Fire Knight, she's going to be great there as well uh, with the triple hitter on the A3 and the double hitter on the A1 ability. Getting that shield down from the Fire Knight and then dealing some really, really nice damage, ignoring that defense once it is. So so those are my favorite areas for her personally, but I love her in the arena. That's how we have her built today. Let's go ahead and head to the arena, guys. What do you say? All right, guys. So the type of team to have around her, right? Uh, I like building her kind of in a hybrid, a, a speedy-ish lead like an Arbiter I think is perfect. We need somebody to give her the increased attack. Obviously, we have a little bit lacking on the crit damage on our build, but a lot on the attack, which is nice. Uh, so an increased attack champion. What else do we want in the team? Again, that shield. We need that shield somehow. So, uh, I went with a bolster set on a Vogoth, right? This is the type of team we would run if we look at the enemy team and we just don't know if we're going to win the speed race, right? We have a lot of survivability built in here. Even having Vogoth on the team, what it does is it helps us keep her at full HP. So every time she goes into that A3, she can take that extra turn, which is so important. So here we have, again, one piece stone, st stone skin, excuse me. So look at this team. We have a Helicath. Obviously, affinity doesn't matter. She's void affinity. We have a Helicath, a Mashald. We have a Lazarius and we have a Pythion. So we can pop off anybody here. So let's start. But keep in mind, even though it's a single target hitter, her A2 is what really can smack down. One shot almost anybody. So I'm going to go after kind of the easy kill. They have two revivers on the team, Lazarius and Pythion. So I'm going to pop off the squishier reviver in Lazarius with the A3. And then we'll get the extra turn. I'm going to go into Pythion and boom. Under 35k, no big deal. There's no way that we had a uh, an Helm Smasher proc on that either. Uh, she can hit with that ability against pretty much anybody. I'm talking 200k plus when we get the full ignore defense on that A2. Uh, anyway, let's go in here and hopefully get to Helicath before he goes in with his. So this is the A1 ability. We'll go uh, Helicath first. One, two. Again, not bad on the damage, not insane. Obviously, a tanky defense unit there. I'm sure we could have smoked Mashald had we went after him, but I wanted to go after the tankier unit with the A1. That was just the A1. Now we have to worry about the stupid block damage. Uh, one thing to consider here is that having a buff stripper might be nice on the team as well. Maybe you can get by with only UDK. You don't need Vogoth on the team as well. I would put Vo a UDK right now. He's in stone skin. I would put him in a bolster set instead. Or maybe you do it, you know, vice versa. Uh, you go with a Volgoth or something like that instead. Uh, but just to speed things up a little bit, we could add another damage dealer or we could add a buff remover in that position. So finally, Mashald at least is out of the... That's, look at that. One 
hit on the sheer swagger. Didn't need all three. And now we just got to wait until the block damage falls off. And we'll be on to the next one here. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. Here comes Gala with a kill shot, hopefully. Boom! Not bad. Not bad. Let's go to the next one here. Who do we got? Who do we got? Let's go after this go first team here. We'll jump in. Now, it doesn't have to be, again, a UDK, an Arbiter, none of these champions. She fits into so many different teams. Let's go A3. Who's... Oh, we know who the tankiest is. So let's go after, again, let's use the same strategy here. Go Arbiter. One shot out of the three. That's all we needed. Duchess, boom! 262,000 damage off of Duchess. Both revivers are down and we are good to go. I'm gonna switch up the team here, guys, in just a moment. Uh, let's see. Oh, she can stay alive with this, man. Forget it. Gonna need a lot more than that. Let's do that A1 against Nishak. Easily can kill a damage dealer. Uh, guys, let's go do the next match, but let's switch up the team a little bit. All right, guys, now we have Arbiter and the Incarnate and a Necrit the Great protecting Gala Longbraid. So I like teams like this because they could, they're equipped to handle a go first situation. If we go first, great. We're going to be great. Just like in that last match, we can pop off their revivers or whatever. If we go second, just like this match, we're still going to be fine, right? So let's... Uh, well, this is cool having Necrit on the same team because now we can go in and we can ally attack. This is especially good if they have like a UDK on the team, even though she does a pretty good job of getting around UDK with the multi-hitters anyway. Uh, but here we can say, okay, who do we want to take out? Let's take out there. Let's try to, with the, just her A1, let's try to take out Arbiter. And we do just on the ally attack. So she hasn't even officially had her turn yet and we're, they're already down and we went second. And this is how like tanky this team is. If you didn't go for the Incarnate Fusion, you can run a Vogoth in the same position, right? Uh, so again, who's the tankiest? Let's let's go after their uh, Trunda. Nice and easy there. Let's take our extra turn and let's see what we can do. I don't think we're gonna be able to kill him here through the ally. Oh, yes we will. Yes we will. Man, that's strong. That is strong. Just taking just taking him out through Necrit's ally protection and all that jazz. Uh, let's just uh, do whatever here. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the next match here, guys. Well, she's gonna take us there. All right, next up, let's see Gala do her thing a little bit more here. I almost called her Molly again. What's wrong with me, man? All right, all right, here we go, here we go. So we went first, but then they cut us in line. So this is a pretty realistic situation as well. They've got Alas, they've got uh, Arbiter, they've got a Lydia. They also have a Mithrala. So I'm actually gonna go in. I wanna see if we can kill Alas with the A3 here. And we can easily kill him. We can come back in, pop off their Reviver, 189K. And it's basically game over already, right? Now we can ally attack. Who do you want to kill in the ally attack? Let's kill the highest turn meter. Well, I say kill. We don't know. Okay, yeah, we do know. We do know. Next! Want to find an Armand's team, guys, that might go first uh, ahead of us as well. So here we go. Let's see what we can do here against an Armand's team. Obviously, a lot of protection with Necrit on there. We do go first against this squad. Let's just see. Let's just see how she does. I'm going to go in with a... Well, we obviously have to take out their Reviver. So let's go in and let's see. Obviously, the passive of Harima could save her, but let's just try it out. Ho, 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 ho. Now let's go ally attack and take out Armands again. Next! All right, guys. I found a team. I found a team. <laughs> what do you guys think of this one? What do you guys think of this one? I don't want any comments saying that I cherry-picked easy teams. I don't want any of those. Uh, nah, I always try to, I always try to uh, give you guys some... Uh, the real deal, you know? Here we go. All right, we got our work cut out for us here. What are we dealing with here, right? We're dealing with a Mezumel who's going to be able to one-shot block revive any of us. Gala most uh, acutely. So we got to take care of her. Siegfried can obviously revive everybody. What do you take me for? And, and or kill everybody. <laughs> okay, we got to take care of him. That's going to be tough to get around Siegfried, you know. Uh, that might be the end of us because I'm not able to take care of him out the gate because he has the unkillable or the block damage. Uh, either way, we know we can't tolerate Mesamel being alive. So let's go after her first. She's dead. All right, we know that we actually have a shot at, at pulling this off. I'm going to go after uh, Makage. 163, she's down. 
And then we can ally attack against Siegfried. We just need to start working on Siegfried here. Get that block damage up. And now we just... All we gotta do... Easier said than done here, ladies and gentlemen. All we gotta do is stay alive for a little bit. But okay, so Siegfried's A did not work there on the A2. Let's try to re reduce that duration. We do. We have a shot here at killing... Uh... What does this do? Puts a shield. We already have that. Nah, we could use a shield on uh, Necret, right? Okay. Let's try the A1 in Siegfried. Boom. Dude. No big deal. No big deal. Obviously, Gala better than Mythicals. Obviously. Obviously. I proved it here, guys. Who needs Mythical when you have Gala Long Braids? the entire team of mythicals no big deal no big deal to be fair it was actually easier than a lot of the other battles that we showed in today's video uh but it's not not just about having the mythicals it's about you know having them uh work together right <laughs> work together uh i really love gala long braids i love her because even with udk's even with you know even with lockout champions right her a1 hits hard enough where you can still get utility out of her she can still pop off and really just go on a tear guys so i would highly recommend you put her on your wish list you obviously hold on to her if you're lucky enough to ever pull dupes of gala during a void uh summoning event or something like that uh really really fun champion i'm so thrilled to have her empowered plus four guys let me know what you think of gala long braids and also let me know if you have any fully empowered epic champions that are kind of the crown jewel of your accounts like gala is of mine thanks for watching till the end much love and as always take care guys